you commented on it in the Patreon account? Yes. Okay, that was yeah. from this past Thanksgiving time, November. Right, I know it was a long time ago, and I thought, I think... Well, that's not that long ago. No, <laughs> I know. At least to me. It, but is, it, is that the same girl that, that's pregnant now? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's why I thought I recognized her voice, yeah. And, um, yeah, that was just amazing, like, it, and so I, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm, it's just like what you said, like, I'm... I'm done. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm miserable, like, you know, like, but I've never been, like, necessarily that kind of person, you know, so I think that's what I've been doing. I live in denial. I live in not facing things and mm-hmm. not feeling the emotions, and I just kind of go along, and and I hide it even from myself. Well, for sure, because you're yeah. the only one who's exp- I mean, obviously, you're hiding it from yourself because, for whatever reason, I, I, it, for my, if, if it were my guess, um, it would stem from this fantasy you've had since childhood that everything's perfect, and that you want everything perfect, and happy people don't have problems, and happy people are rich, and happy people like uh-huh. are thin and pretty, and happy uh-huh. people are successful, and they're smart, and they go to school, and happy people. <laughs> Talk about the brainwashing, right? Yeah, that's a lot of brainwashing. Like, what the hell was I doing when I was little? Well, when you think about it, it is nowhere close to reality. Like, all of those thoughts are nowhere close to reality. Nowhere. I know. I so, because you've experienced reality, and has it ever really been that way? No. Mm-mm. Ever. Because it's so dynamic. It's so... There's yeah. no... Con- there's no controlling reality you're not the creator the god the every you know and to think that's what it should be like means that you believe you know more than god and what what is should be real you know anyway so yeah. the real when you live in reality it means that you kind of have to accept what it what reality is and as it occurs because you really don't know anything other than what you're currently witnessing. Okay. You're not creating the concept of what you're witnessing and then making what's happening happen, right? But our, our right. thoughts yeah. make us think because we expect it that it should happen. But your expectations are coming from fantasies. Mm-hmm. Not taking into account, oh, well, there's a weather pattern happening and it's not going to be sunny today because the weather pattern is creating an equilibrium or balance with the ecosystem. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's like expecting the sun to shine um, because that's what you need and then being upset that the weather doesn't match your concept of what you need. Right, and I think, like, there's some things in life that I've been able to, like, you know, say the weather, like, okay, whatever, you know, but then there's so many other things that, like, just stop me in my tracks, you know, like. Well, you could say that's like your fight or flight response, your yeah. survival response. Anything that's perceived, you know, when you perceive or is an actual threat puts you into a survival response. If you think about your perceptions of threat, it's not just, um, this is bad. It's, and I can't handle it. There's two sides to threat. So you're not questioning, I can't handle this. I can't handle that. I can't handle, I can't handle. You have said, if you go back to our early sessions and even current sessions, I just can't. I can't. Uh And I'm always like, yes, you can. You're just not aware of it. You just go into, I can't, which is your response to, I feel insecure, inadequate, and I don't want, right? overwhelmed. Yeah, it's like like there's a monster of of a fat body in front of me and I can't handle it. And the question, and that's why I go into permanence with people. Well, if you go into permanence with it, what's the actual answer? Well, and then what's the answer? Accept it. Which means you can handle it. And it's actually not as bad as you've made it out to be. Right? Right. You you catastrophize things. I actually wrote about this yesterday trying to describe... (laughs) catastrophe like people come to the clinic and when I work with someone like yourself or you know someone who's you know 
at their current weight where they want to be, but they catastrophize a two pound gain, no different than you're catastrophizing your weight. You literally feel equally about your weight, similar to the person that's 300 pounds. They equally feel it's a catastrophe. It's a 10 on the scale of one to 10 in terms of life hardship. You know, like if we were to have you rate right now, if you were to be honest, don't deny this, where would you rate your body when you first started working with me? On a scale oh. of one to 10 in terms of this is, I, it is a life hardship. Which one? Oh, 10, yes. Yeah, so when you take, yes. so so when you look at, for example, getting in a car accident and become a paraplegic, where would you rate that then? The same. So about ha having body fat is a 10, being a paraplegic <laughs> is a 10. What would you rate losing um, your hearing permanently? You'll never hear music, you'll never hear your children's voices, you'll never hear your grandchildren's voices, you'll never hear a movie again, you'll never hear anybody. I think, I think, I think the same, yeah. Okay, so that's I mean, a 10. So what do you, would you rate like going blind? You'll never see the sky, you'll never see your children, you'll never see your grandchildren, you'll never see your body, you'll never see your husband, you'll never see anything again, which means you're going to always need to be guided somehow, to some degree. Uh, I would, the same, a 10. Okay, so what would you rate? getting being a burn victim but it's like on your oh, face yeah. and your hair and your head so you don't you're, so you're basically disfigured permanently because you know when you burn your face your nose melts the fat melts yeah. you can't get any yeah. of that back right that would definitely be a 10 okay so how much is having uh, extra body fat again yeah not, not a 10 <laughs> what? that's not as bad as the burn well is it really that bad no. Is it bad? No. Correct. So it's a zero or a it's, one maybe compared right, to... Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So do you see how when you actually... What that does is it just diminishes... It, it makes... Number one, it makes you aware how distorted you, you are when it comes to body fat. Mm -hmm, like you're, mm -hmm. you're treating it as if it's totally... Right. Like you are a burn victim. You are reacting yeah. as if you cannot recover from that. What's amazing though, if you look at, let's just say, being a burn victim... And having yeah. permanent disfigurement or being blind, could you live um, a valuable and happy life? With, with both? With one yeah. or the other or any of them? Yeah. And how, easy, how quickly would you recover in terms of accepting it and moving on and allowing your life to flourish with uh, what you have? Yeah, that, I think that probably depends on person to person, you know. Well, of course, like, your victim positionality. How long do you want to be a victim yeah. and feel sorry for yourself? Right. Correct. So, but when you think about it, I want you to compare your willingness to be overweight to your will if you had to, if it's permanent, which one would you more quickly accept? Permanent blindness or permanently being 170 pounds? The weight would be a lot easier. Well, you say that. <laughs> I, right, no, I know. I mean, if you now that I've I've never compared it really, I just always just like just like that's consumed my entire life, you know. And I think yeah, well, think about if you just if you if you accepted that permanently, what would change? If you accepted being 170 to 180 pounds permanently forever till the day you die at 95, whatever age you are fortunate to die at, what what would that do for you? It would free me uh -huh. from everything. <laughs> everything. I know you say everything, and you're correct. It is literally mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. All of it goes poof. Because you wouldn't have any fear of food anymore. You wouldn't have bad food, good food, morality. Yeah. You wouldn't have, like, this, any shame in any way. What happens to the shame? It's gone. Yeah. yeah. What happens to how you feel about people who judge you for it? I mean, I'm not no. there. I'm there. <laughs> no, I would agree with what you were going to say. Yes. Huh? They're special. <laughs> I don't like that word, though. But they I don't. Like, oh. Well, when it's you, yes, and you were using it in the way that it was. You, yes, I would agree. Okay, moving moving on, you're correct. I would agree. <laughs> They're insignificant. They're, they don't matter. Well, they don't understand either. I mean, look at what your choice to stay overweight is for. Oh, right, exactly. 
Exactly. Oh, yeah. they have yeah. no clue what you're freeing yourself from by, by being okay with this. Yeah, like I, I texted my friend and I was like, tell you know, oh, I started this therapy with, you know, I'm an eating disorder specialist and, and it's life-changing, you know, and she, like, you know, she's my friend. She also has had issues with a lot of, you know, weight and autoimmune. Yeah, you've told me all about her and she absolutely is suffering too. She's probably nowhere close to ready though. Um, and oh no, this is a different friend. Oh, okay. The, the friend I work with, yeah, and and she texts me back saying eating disorder. You know, like she had no idea. It, yeah, like it, you know, I yeah, you know, I knew you always dieted, but it didn't. You know, people don't realize like mm -mm. Oh, what that is eating disorder. You know, <laughs> and so I think that's the thing is like no one. I've just made them, you know, have this facade for so long. Like well, no one's questioning it. No one questions your desire to be thinner. They all think that it's supposed to be that way. Shouldn't we all want to be thinner? Shouldn't we? Right. And then the association to that, it's healthier, even though this, what's going on is extre it's actually extremely unhealthy. I mean, think about the degree of just go into the science of fight or flight. What do you think that's yeah. doing to your body? Chronic. It's, it's not just acute. Stress on it. Yes. Yeah, it is terrible consequences mm -hmm. to your bladder, to your digestive system. When you're in fight or flight, your whole everything leaves. The, like your it digestive shuts system down. shuts down. And so imagine having fight or flight while you're eating. Mm -hmm. Oh, your digestive system shutting down while you're shoving food in your face as if it's a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you know, when you go into fight or flight or stress mode your body goes into gluconeogenesis so you're producing glucose from the liver and the and your and the you know your um oh my god i'm losing my shit the liver and glycogen storage is actually producing glucose while you're eating and your gut is stopped digesting mhm mm and this excess of because you're fearing the food you're eating. Your food that you're eating is the dragon that's going to kill you. And so you're in fight or flight while you're eating food because of what you've been fear-mongered to believe about that food from the health industry and the diet industry. No one ever questions that. No one's looking at that. It's like the science of fight or flight and survival mode have been, it's been around for a long time. And the reality of what happens to your entire digestive system and your is that it says, well, we don't need to digest food. We need to run. And what that, how that impacts your heart, why you're shoving food in your face, feeling shame, and that you've done something wrong. Yeah, that's helped me. Like that is that was kind of I, I knew I've studied Maslow. I I knew about that and and. Like, I had this really good conversation with my sister, and she's like, well, back when you studied it, you were, you know, you would never have thought anything, because you, you did one, probably didn't think you had a problem, or, you know, two, not ready to face it. You know, like, well, don't you agree if we were really to take a step back from the culture, and the culture of dieting and thinness, and thin supremacy, and the whole concept of thin righteousness, and health righteousness, if we take a step back, all of that is inflammatory survival mode. All it. Right, and and to me, I always just thought, oh, someone's chasing you with a gun, someone's got a knife to your neck, you know, like that is typically what people think of survival mode. Yeah, know? no, well, when it comes to the, bear, you know? when it comes to food, it's so right. primal, it's so primal and essential to survival that it, we're very sensitive to that trigger, more so than someone judging you. They're both yeah. triggering, but those are so simple, no one considers survival mode is attached to someone criticizing you. When you Good. don't think you can handle it and you want that person's approval. Again, it's there's context around that criticism. Because I'm assuming you've been criticized before and you just and there's certain people you really don't give a shit what they think. It's kinda like I, I use the example of the people proselytizing, these uh, religious zealots proselytizing and picketing, telling you you're gonna go to hell. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, bless his heart or bless her heart. They they probably are doing this for penance or something and you don't feel you don't take it realistically no, right so they're so because not they're right. not credible plus you don't you know that someone else so do you feel that there's a distance between that person but if it was your mother you might feel a little different but anyway survival right, right. yeah 
So I'm, I'm actually writing about this and you've never, no one questions the symptoms, right? The symptoms of survival mode and what they are, or, or PTSD even, you know, PTSD, oh, right. you know, how it manifests is, you know, it, it's a kind of a more radical response in terms of fear um, to social environments, um, your sense of inability, fear of what's going on, and so it manifests in being a controlling person. Yeah, that's true. Because you're trying to control what you feel yeah, in, inadequate yeah. and incapable yeah, of. And you feel out of control. Correct. And then people say, well, you're just type A personality. <laughs> that's funny. Right. See, that's what I didn't, I mean, I've, like, I've learned, I mean, it's insane how much I've learned in this short amount of time. Like, it's crazy because I never thought of that either. Like, I just never realized that that was a you know, all my personality traits were like symptoms compensating. Yeah. Like there's I symptoms this. and we would all have the yeah. same symptoms. So is it really special to you? No, I mean, mm -mm. I thought, oh, it's just genetic. That's how I am. <laughs> well, yes, it is. It's genetic in everybody. <laughs> That's true. I never, ever, I never would have thought I never would have thought that. That was like... Well, because for some reason we humans think we're not really animals. We don't think that we've actually participated in billions of years of evolution. Like, we are so special. Some of that is the rejection of evolution, and which to me is actually manifestation of creation. So, because I believe in creation, but it happens through evolution. And we are clearly a part of that system. Yeah. So we have evolved through creation to be this way. We're animals. Yeah. So to separate ourselves from the evolution of a, of a dog or an elephant, other pack animals, right? Other animals that survive and, and thrive in, with, with other animals. So we're not, we don't thrive so much independent. We need and actually cohabitate with other animals like dogs yeah, right? and cats and birds you know they there's so much cohabitating and we're a part of that so to think that you're immune to the same response a dog has that you don't put a stripe up on your back like a dog that our way of doing it is is absolutely similar you know the idea that you're paralyzed you know how how, how does paralysis manifest well it you're wanting to blend into your background. You want to look exactly like everybody else looks so no one can see you. You know, hiding. Yeah, like, that's what bunnies do, you know. They, totally. like, play dead. Correct. Like, and that's, that. you could look at when something makes you feel inadequate, you're like a freaking bunny. You play dead. You don't know what to do and you go into denial. Mm -hmm. Deny, 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 deny. Don't do anything. <laughs> Pretend like it doesn't exist. Well, that's been, yeah, that's exactly what I've done my whole life. Like, I now realize that. Like, I yeah. just, like you said, been in that room with la, 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 you know, like, <laughs> the monster, and, like, I'm just looking every which way, but I won't look straight at it ever. <laughs> right. Well, that's because you don't, you don't feel like you can handle it, and that's really comes down to where you're really where the insecurity exists that makes your environment so important and why you need to control your environment because you don't have a sense of capacity because you've never actually tested it. So one of the yeah. things that it requires, I think, to, to do this is a moment of courage. And what, what courage is, is like willingness to expose yourself even though there's no guarantee you're going to survive it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. like facing the dragon knowing that it's going to burn you. It's going to blow mm -hmm. it because what do you, you can either run away and hide for your whole life or you face it for the first time and ask, why are you here? Have a conversation with the dragon. And yeah, I don't think I'm afraid anymore to do that. Like, like you said, like I'm not afraid to die. I'm like, you know, because what, what, what life have I been living? I mean, it wasn't living, you know. Right. I will be dead. Like, you know. Well, that's the thing. It's like if this is what your life is going to be like, running away from these emotions that you're afraid mm -hmm. that you can't handle, and they're fear based, which is really underneath it all is fear of death right? It will kill me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if being fat kills you, then that's maybe that's your plan in life and you should let it happen. Otherwise you're going to live your whole life 
obsessing over it with survival mode instincts and that's not you know no that's that's not really that's not living at all that's like actually quite miserable yeah I think I did that like whole I would always downplay it like because I wasn't facing it I was like oh it's not as bad as it is you know I never realized well always in hindsight it's not that bad but when you're in the moment, right. it's horrible. And in, in the same way, when you're getting into a position where you're a victim of the diet and you need the food, you downsize the food, you victim, you magnify how terrible the dieting is. It goes both yeah. ways, right? You go yeah. back and forth yeah. between, oh, I need yeah. my That's food, why. screw it, I can handle weight gain. And then when it comes down to it, yeah. you're like, I can't handle the weight gain. I need a diet. And diets are like, you romanticize the diet, right? And that's why I was always so impulsive. Like my, I was yeah, I've been always so impulsive with everything. Oh my god, you're so like, seeing that now. You're seeing that it now. It's just crazy. Yeah, like what yeah. the heck? Why did I- when you go back to our earlier sessions, are you like, oh my god, listen, listen to the? No, I know it's. It's, it's so understandable. I think it's really important that you forgive that and see it as like, well, of course. Yeah, I of mean, course I'm different. I mean, no, I'm and those intense, those it. feelings are intense. Your oh, yeah, your I, feelings I, of can't handling it, and your feelings of fear, and the fear of the fear of can't handling it. I mean, it compounds under that. Situ- don't you agree? I would do the same thing if I was in that space. Mhm. And that's why, right? I just always just. But however, I I've done it, and I'm aware now of what to do without the awareness yeah. that I got sitting in it willing to die right i would be doing i i would have it would never have stopped it's like a vicious because you're stuck in survival mode unwilling to face what is triggering it so how can you get out right and when that's all you've ever known and so that's to someone else would be like oh my gosh like how could you live like that well that's all i've ever known that's what's safe to me you know it's mm-hmm. just going back and forth, back and forth, back well, yeah, and forth. Yeah, but and there's a huge, huge cultural support of what you're doing. Right. So yeah. that's the other part. It's not that you didn't know what you were doing. You have been brainwashed by an entire culture of thin supremacy in the diet industry that supports it and thrives on it. Mm-hmm. And, and they would, would never, that. ever even consider you having an eating disorder. You're normal. Right. Yeah, and, you, and you thought, all about all that stuff. Like, and then they tell you, I know why you're impulsive, because the food is addictive. Oh, it's because your gut bacteria is off. Oh, it's because, right. it's be- well, and it gets you so confused, because, like, I I was always very, like, impressionable, and, and very, because I was so insecure and didn't, didn't, like, rely on my own Yeah, but wouldn't all. you say you were very impressionable, but you were also very educated, you did you, would you say in your mind you weren't dumb about it? Oh, not at all. Like the girls at work, they like like well, you know so much about diets. Mm. Like, yeah, I've read fifty thousand million books. I've got done every diet known to man. But you are so wonderful. You should be really <laughs> oh my God. right. Like, You're the like the diet guru. I've had clients that actually get off on being the diet guru, and that's the hardest thing for them to give up when they actually recover is the fact that they really feel proud about the fact that they are the leader in the group of all dieters. Right. I'm like, I'm just a fake. Like, I'm just telling you this is the most recent book I've read. You know, like, get, I'm telling you, okay, you should not eat carbs because this is the disaster. Oh, yeah. a, a year ago, oh, no, you should not eat fat. You know, oh, you should, you know, drink vinegar, whatever. <laughs> like, it's like, I would just, like, I think I was searching, I was yearning, searching and wanting so bad, like, whatever it was, you know, to feel the emptiness. And, and I guess I was thinking it was being thin, so I would just, like, go from thing to thing. And I was like, oh, well, this one makes sense. Oh, this makes sense. <laughs> oh, this person knows what they're talking about. Oh, oh yeah. This person does. Too. And it's like, it's. So you get so confused. You, I've like read so many books, and it's just like they all tell you something different. I know. Like and never questioning the fact that even if they have some type of science-ish behind it, and even right. talking about the HCG protocol, the way it's approached as a diet is no different. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you look at the fear 
of body fat and the fear of how it projects into the fear of food once again fight or flight around food let's just talk about fight or flight and what goes on just in the brain thinking food is threatening immediately your blood goes away from the gut imagine you're eating <laughs> on top of that you feel bad and you've done something wrong as the liver and glycogen breakdown stored energy and pr produce glucose so blood sugar is rising while you're eating food you've demonized and then you're eating the food as a psychological mechanism to protect yourself based on survival mechanisms around feeling that you've had enough food and you feel safe with food and so you're binging while you're doing all this stuff wondering why you're doing it and it's super frantic and everybody's saying it's because the food's addictive which is actually supporting the actual problem exactly and when it's it's really that it's that salivating like dog you know it's that <laughs> you're an animal yeah it's that that's why the binging you know you're just like ravenous like you're just well, like, and you feel like you failed when you're eating it and so when you feel that you're <laughs> failed especially the whole day if the day is ruined what happens to your freedom to eat the rest of that day it opens up and you have a day not to feel bad about it because you've already ruined it so get it all in get it oh, all in yeah I can't tell you how I mean I have done that so many that's <laughs> that's probably the that's when I would mostly like binge is you know okay let's get it all in well yeah well because you're also have told yourself not only does the day ruin so you have the freedom not to eat all the food that you've demonized and shouldn't be eating Exactly. However, you've also said, but and I will fix it. I will fix it. So all the damages that are being done, I will fix. So, so you're enab it's enabling. The diet is enabling you. Yes. No, it's not only the the part of the equation that promotes the binge because if you eat that, you have failed. It's bad. On top of the inflammation, eating the food that creates the gluconeogenesis and the removal from <laughs> digestion in the gut. On top yeah. of that now you're actually it's it's also your savior in the end it's going to rescue you so isn't it's not just the persecutor in this whole drama triangle because the it is withholding you from reality as an animal but it's also going to save you with the body fat that is threatening your need to feel lovable so it's confusion and chaos between two survival needs one being your survival in the the, the animal desire to feel lovable and to feel loved and then it's also triggering these issues at the foundation of the core of our survival around food in the fact that you're not supposed to eat, you shouldn't be eating, you're a bad person if you eat, you're stigmatized by eating and you've ruined it. You know, yeah. so you see how that's so confusing when you're in it and why oh, eating yeah. disorders are so, are like the leading in all mental illnesses considered the most dangerous because of the morbidity rate. Not just how many people die, commit suicide, have heart attacks, but consider the, the morbidity and the disease around fight or flight, chronic fight or flight, especially with food. And how many people out there who are in the diet, who have been living in the diet cult, the thin supremacy cult, who now have gut problems, never really thinking that maybe their fight or flight and their adrenal fatigue is coming from the fact that they live in shame around food at all times. Oh yeah, that's totally linked to your, it, your brain. Yes, yeah, totally linked to your gut. <laughs> just saying, you know, you never consider yeah. the diet that's supposed to help your gut is actually creating the stress to the gut that you're trying to fix. Right, as a gut nurse, yes. <laughs> a lot of now you're laughing. And they don't like to be. Do you work like, for you a know, gastroenterologist? You, oh yeah, yeah. I, for 21 years, I've. Mm. So why don't you explain this to people who are listening right now going, I am so offended about what she's saying. Doesn't Robin even know about what's going on with the food? <laughs> and then people don't, they don't like to hear like that you need some therapy. You <laughs> no, need, they you don't. Need to calm, you need to relax. And they're like, no, you need to fix this. No, okay. you need to because it's in the food that I've been binging on. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, it's hard. It's hard because people don't. They don't equate emotional problems to like physical like symptoms. You know, stomach pro Yeah, yeah. But. Well, isn't that old school thinking though? I mean, isn't that just old school Western medicine? Mm -hmm. 
when it comes down to it. They used to think, they used to not even look at nutrition as a, a source of, you know, the symptoms of malnourishment. And they don't know, oh, it's malnourishment. Well, your teeth are falling out. Well, maybe you should look at that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But you, one thing you said that really stuck with me was that um, when you're, when you want to eat a food, or, you know, okay, so if you're, if you're not hungry and you want to eat, you know, I usually, that's where my impulse control is a lot of times not good and I just give in and I'm like I, I totally like do that fuck it you know I'll deal with it later kind of thing yeah like, but you, you never a card you know <laughs> I'll just charge it charge it charge it and just deal with it later la 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 you know and but you said like if you don't have that diet if you're never going to diet again you don't have that diet to save you then you really have to think like why am I doing I, this do I want and do I want the consequence without being able to fix it mm-hmm and I was that really like I was like yeah you're, like you're totally right like you have to think about that because I never had to think about it because you, know, you always had a diet in your back pocket I, yeah yeah <laughs> the fall guy will take the yeah and so you've been enabled to be emotionally mm -hmm. immature emotionally really kind of uh, weak that isn't a judgment it's just a reality know, right? around not yeah. only your it's not only enabled you to be in, unaware of your capacity to emotionally develop and strengthen and grow and to mature because you've never experienced that, but it's also enabled you um, fearful of your environment. Yeah, because you, you just think, oh, I have no willpower, you know. Yeah, well, that's for, coming from the, that's the stigma of coming yeah. to you from the diet cult and the thin supremacy cult. <laughs> you have no willpower. Oh, really? Or is it just human nature that you have? Right. You have human nature. And it's not willpower if you're starving yourself. Isn't it self-preservation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one looks at it that way. Uh -uh. You're weak. You're, you're, you're lazy. Oh, that you're, don't, for, don't yeah. forget it's the food and you're addicted to it. Don't forget that one. And, I mean, honestly, I, I've been one of those people. Even though I've had such issues myself, I've been that asshole person. You know? Well, that's because you're indoctrinated. And, yeah. And I You've know, been brainwashed. And I would never, like... So it is it are you an asshole person is that an, or is that an asshole belief system? Right, no, I'm not an asshole person, but it's no, an like, asshole even... belief system that yeah. you internalized and spewed. Blah, so blah. I would never want to be judged, you know, and I find myself like we were watching the This Is Us finale last night, and you know, there's a there's a the girl on that she's quite heavy, you know, and I and I before when we'd watch it, I felt like I was you know judging her, and then now I was just like. Look at what a beautiful, amazing person she is. Like, I just, like, it was like my, everything changed. Like, oh, my God. You hit your heart. I, you hit the heart. Your heart is like, whoa. That's good. Yeah. I was just like, I didn't see her as just this pig, fat person, you know. Like, Lazy, totally yeah, like, not educated. That's the stigma. You remove the stigma from her, and you yeah. actually connected at the heart to her essence, her beingness. Yeah. yeah. And which is so sad. Like, I can't believe that I, you know, did. I mean, I, yeah, I was a very judgmental person. Yeah, but is it you or was it the system you believed in that you were using as self-protection? Was it you or was it your armor that was saying she sucks? Right, it's the armor. And I think I, my mom's very similar. Very okay, it's also, like so them. what I'm trying to help you do right now is, is to not take it personal that you were that way because it had nothing to do with you. You were brainwashed. You didn't create right. You didn't create stigma like that. You were told that. You were presented that. You were not only that, but you were living in a culture, right, that is that way, very narcissistic, very ignorant mm -hmm. when it comes to this stuff. And it's not just you. It's a couple generations prior to you. Right, and you even if no one's telling you that, like you – Culture, it's it. cultural, yeah. yes, and yeah. and to some degree we could look at this and go, well, this is also very primal because if someone has an issue with food, you that again for millions of years, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of years of evolution, if there wasn't any food and someone was obese, they clearly the there, the assumption would be made that they are out of control and you can't trust them with the food. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I've never even read that, but there's a there could be some primal thing of, around the stigma of it. But it's also very cultural. It's very promoted right now. 
Anyway, so yeah. you have to really go, well, no wonder I th so that you don't feel guilty. We want to get rid of all the guilt and have more compassion so that you yeah. can let it go. If you have compassion for why you held on to those beliefs, you can let them go really easily. I mean, it's totally explained. It, it makes sense now. Like it's like it's it, right. I don't feel guilty. You know, I don't think I'm a bad person for like was being brainwashed. Like no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just you weren't aware. So now that you're becoming right. more aware, it's gonna. You know, should you hold yourself to that belief system so that you? Because in essence, if you hold yourself to that belief system you are supporting it and sustaining it and you're not actually coming out of it going that is a very dangerous environment for people to be in mm -hmm. the dangerous yeah. because they're playing with survival mechanisms especially around food so does it make sense okay did you go back to the session where i was like i'm going to give you the statistics of um shame and stigma in the medical industry oh yeah yeah you might want to watch yeah, that one and, I, and i got you, you saw know, those text messages. I took uh -huh. sent pictures yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. When you yeah. see that, it's like that's the downside. And um, you've experienced it from within it. You just never looked at yourself. You never looked at your struggles as why people get that way. You never looked at that. You always just made the assumption it's because they're lazy. Well, you're not lazy. Look at how hard you've worked at this. True. They're yeah. dumb. You're hold on, I'm not dumb. Look how much in intellect I've put into studying this. How many books I've read. They're unmotivated. Well, you're not unmotivated. Look at how much obsessiveness and dedication you've put to this. They don't want it enough. Well, look at yourself. You, is it, did you really not want it enough? Really? You know, and you're the example of why people gain weight and you've also gained weight and look at where you're at. So when you look at the body, you're what? Five foot and 168, whatever it is. Five, five foot, yeah. Five okay, feet. so when you look yeah. at that, you could say, well, it, should I be blaming the body for what's going on or the belief system? The belief system, so, exactly. So you, you, that's how you get it out of your brain, the brainwashing. So you see it is not me, it's just what I believed. And the way I believed is why I was shaming the weight I had. Not connecting the dots between... Oh, yeah. The, the, the assumption around people who are overweight are dumb, ignorant. They they don't they're not working hard. They don't dedicate. But mm -hmm. yet, looking at how hard you, the opposite which you're doing and how that's manifesting in this body fat that you have. Yeah. And the impulsivity and the triggers you have to being to eating. No one ever looks at the food restriction and the morality around the food restriction as triggering to that primal need to eat. Wouldn't everybody eat under those circumstances? Is it just you that's having these eating issues? No. Or is no, it every pretty much no. everybody in that culture? Yes. They're everyone who has the same programming. Correct. Know? And who's human and has human, uh -huh. human uh -huh. instincts, with which these programs are clashing with. So you could say, well, why are we stigmatizing people when in reality my truth is for the most part, the truth of most people that are in it. Why are we as people who have been this devoted and dedicated to thin supremacy still shaming people who are having issues with food when, when within it we're, the one, we're, we're no different? Their issues with food are like my issues with food. I can make an assumption, you know, that someone who is struggling with weight is struggling with some of the same issues I am. And it's within, I can guarantee they feel bad about their weight and they feel bad about the food they're eating. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just ignorance. It's just like with politics and religion, and, you know, everything. <laughs> yeah. People think what they think and they think it's just all right. <laughs> Correct. Not, th not questioning that those thoughts are promoting that in them. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so I, when you I, come out of it, this is this is a hard. This is probably one of the hardest things I have to do as a teacher and as a guide is to help people who are, let's just say, 350 pounds, see the weight that they're at isn't because their body sucks and needs to be fixed. It's because the system of wanting to be yeah. thinner promotes it. So if they right. want to stop gaining weight, they gotta accept where they're at and leave because that's the only way yeah. to get out is to yeah. leave the cult. And that yeah, risk like, is to yeah. be the same weight. You have to be the same weight and be okay with it permanently. You have to right. literally, and you have to surrender psychologically, spiritually, and physically to it. Mm -hmm. That clip.
clicked because it was like I always thought it was the the weight mm -hmm. that I hated, or you know that like I, I always thought that was the problem. But well, it, yeah. Well, then you blame you know, it on the the other part is blaming it on health. But I need to be healthy, and it's like, well, there's the brainwashing again. Even it's though it's hard to argue stuff. with someone who's 350 or 400 pounds, it's like, well, for your health, you need to get out of the of the cult. You need to get out. You need to stop dieting. But I have you're to not, diet for my health. I'm going to die. I have diabetes, right. you know. You're not promoting that, you know, 400 pounds is a healthy way to live. You're no. just promoting that. that they the get reason. out of the reasons why they're there. Yeah, Correct. exactly. And the exactly. funny thing is the illusion that the diet industry has created is that you can't do it without them. The body isn't capable of sustaining itself without the controls of a diet. Doesn't that sound pretty parallel to religious cult, cult, cult thinking? Oh, definitely. Yours? And then they think, well, the, oh, the only way you're ever going to like lose this way is if you get gastric bypass, you know, like... Well, and for some people, it and I don't want to be super critical of the big picture because for some people, it is so they have to have something so drastic occur that it's you know, and for some yeah. people, it does shift their consciousness to go there. However, the statistics aren't very good. And I think, doctor, I think in terms of the full of, recovery, they do it. I think maybe too. Well, to me, I think the therapists are really not looking at um, the body image aspect. They're not really resolving the body image aspect, which to me is why I believe this, what we're talking about is really should be foundational. So, for example, there's a reason why I support the HCG protocol. Once someone has recovered, I would also support gastric bypass once someone is fully recovered because they don't get yeah. high off of getting thinner. They don't yeah. attach to it. They don't, it doesn't become their life saving, life saving reaction yeah. the body's doing. It's like the body's doing it naturally on its own. It was saving your life in the first place the whole time. That's how it gained all that weight. Makes sense? So by yeah. people having these awake, an awakening, which is basically what you're happening. <gasps> Waking up, uh -huh. coming out of brainwashing, coming out of body image brainwashing and body image identity and culture and all that is you're less likely to get high off of losing weight. You're less likely to care when this is over that you're going to regain weight because you're on the protocol, right? Not because I told you to. You're right. Because you impulsively went into it to try to lose weight. So which is our last session was about what's going to happen when this is over. What's going to happen? You're going to, uh -huh. if you're not okay gaining weight, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to go through vicious cycles, more and more of it, you know? And so, and I understand that. And to me, you having to go through more cycles might get you closer to going, I quit. I'm done. I do not care one way or the other. If I gain weight, lose weight, I'm done. I don't want to care. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to be defined by it. And this isn't my life's purpose. My life's purpose is to move on from this and open my mind. So, yeah, I think that's that's kind of where I got to. Like I was like, I see what I see what Robert means now. Like I, it's not as if like, oh my gosh, I'm in this deep dark cave of depression. You know, it was it was like you said the the tea. Like I I felt like just exhaust like Can't I ran do it like anymore. A, a, the diet marathon you know I was just, just like fatigued with it all like I just I'm, done, I'm just like I'm not like miserable but I'm just done like I'm just tired of it all that's kind of how I felt like it was just like just the thought of it just like oh just so awful you know and well the I, all you know, well the awfulness and the depression that you're that is there. There is something there it might manifest as you gain weight and do nothing. So you just might not have, it's not bubbling up yet. You're coping, you're running, you're coping, you're running, you're running, you're coping. And you, your coping is somewhat creating something for you. You're getting out of it. So it's uh, superficial. The not depressed is my guess that you're superficially not depressed. What's going to happen, and this would be my, um, what I'm just not, I'm not, 
well, what I'm doing is I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if okay. as you start to see the way out and you take the route out that stuff is going to start coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like definitely. I'm a worthless piece of shit. I, all those feelings underneath that, no, I am not lovable. I am worthless. That those things are going to come and they're going to really come out at you loud and clear. And if you're not willing to face them, question them, open yourself up to those thoughts and beliefs, you're going to run away from them. So you'll do it. You'll run away, which is what you've been doing. You're going to, I can't handle this. You'll think what will happen is the perception of that by, by not trying to be thinner or working on this, I, that, that the removal of that is why I feel shitty about myself. So in order to feel good about myself, shouldn't I be working on my weight? At least that's better than nothing. But in reality, it's the feelings underneath that have to be addressed, not coped with to feel better about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, Does that make sense? Right. Oh, yeah, I totally. So you're coping with them. is So that's why you're like, well, I'm not that bad. I'm just fatiguing. And it was miserable. Well, uh, yeah. Yes. So what happens when you stop and all of these, and you could look at your coping and go, wow, that was really intense. So there must be something equally intense underneath it. Yeah. I know there, I definitely know there is. So then it's going to show up and you have to be willing to face it, even though you don't feel like you're capable. Cause you could say, well, I don't feel capable of those feelings. Neither did I. It takes a lot of courage to face feelings that, that feel like you're going to get murdered, <laughs> you know? Life is yeah. worthless, and for me, th at its worst, as I kept on going into the feelings of terror, it felt like I was going to be smushed into sand and blown in the wind. I wouldn't exist. There was no existence if I did nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I... And I, and I did nothing. I, to me, if that was God's will, I was willing to do it. And I didn't even know if I believed in God at the time because the God that I grew up to believe in was a fictitious man, you know. But to me, it was like the willingness, if that is my will, if that is the truth of the life I'm supposed to be in because it feels that that has been chasing me and I've been denying it, I have to accept yeah. it if that is the truth of the life that I am in. If I am going to die right here and now, I guess I should just accept it because I can't continue to run away from these emotions for the rest of my life as if this is my life's purpose, you know, right. That was a very you, simplified way of describing it. <laughs> do you think, Feels way more complicated. Um, do you think someone who doesn't necessarily, or doesn't know if they believe in God or not, or is not like a spiritual religious person, do you, do you think like it can still recover? Right? Yeah, of course, because you don't have, because the idea of God yeah. is usually something brainwashed anyways. Right, right. It's a concept that's given that's to you of this man that sits up on the top of the clouds yeah. and basically creates famine for people that are sinners. <laughs> you know what I mean? A hateful God. You know, it just depends on your concept of what that is. To me, it's like real. You can say God is reality. God is the universe. God is the magnificence of existence, which is infinite. It is. Yeah, like for, I kind of, I, I of course believe in the, the values and the morals of the, and ethics of, of, you know, that belief system but I don't I don't I don't know I, don't. I mean every one of them is different so <laughs> which but, one you know like like being a good person okay that is just humanness you know. that's yeah. your humanness so you believe in human nature yeah. but I don't I don't I don't think I, I don't know if I, I mean you don't have to course, I'm telling you when I went through this I basically yeah. said I can't I cannot do this with the concept of God or yeah. Jesus that I was raised with because I'm I've been abandoned because I am a shameful person because I had sex before I was married. It was that bad. Right. You know, that's how deeply um, well, shameful course, I was. Yeah, it's super radical. And I mean, look at how how much dysfunction in the world due to religion. Like, you know, terrorism. The radicalism. The, yeah, the yeah, radicalism in it. It does yeah. serve a purpose. It does serve a be And it has mm -hmm. served benefits. It has benefited humanity, if you could mm -hmm. say. Um, just in giving structure and purpose, and some people need it. They're not evolved enough to function on their own. They need to have someone to tell them not to do things, and they follow. Yes. So that's, I'm not going to, 
it, it all serves a purpose, but there is a massive downside when it's used narcissistically to, as your survival. Yeah, yeah. And, and my parents, I mean, we, my, my parents are Christian. My sister's very Christian. You know, and, and I think I'm okay with that now that, like, they may not, well, I don't care what they think of me. You know, they may not agree with, they don't say anything really, you know, but they, I don't care what they think. Well, if, you they, know, if, to, they, if they really f feel the need for it, that's what they should do. Just like you're feeling the need to not do it or that you don't. Yeah. It yeah, is equal. I don't judge anyone. Correct. I don't, I don't. So when it comes to this whole like surrendering, you do have to surrender to reality. If you want to call it reality, that's what it is. It is the infinite space of reality. If your reality is that you are to die, then that is, and you can feel that's chasing you, the Grim Reapers behind you. You might want to stop and face reality. Uh -huh. And that's what it felt like for me. I am gonna die. And it's right there and it's chasing me, but I want to live. So I, you know, you can see why, because I wanted to stay alive. I was willing to go to such extremes because living yeah. to me was doing all that exercise and obsessing over my size and feeling good about myself because I was hot and thin and perfect. Thank God we didn't have social media back then. Cause I'd have pictures all over. <laughs> a lot of people do. I just, I, I mean, I, I like Facebook for, you know, like, I don't know, just to, for just cute things and like seeing, you know, like, okay, it's good seeing pictures of, you know, grandparents yeah. and see pictures of their grandkids when they don't live next by them. But oh, of course. Like, I'm talking like Instagram. All this crap. Like, what Instagram, look at me. And I'd be, I would probably yeah. post how much I'm exercising, all sorts of shit like that. So, so with that said, because it felt like I, that what I had to do was that, and it behind it was the Grim Reaper, right? If people yeah. knew I had to do this because of that Grim Reaper, they would feel sorry for me. They'd go, oh, my God. They wouldn't be promoting it. Yeah. You know, it's just and so hard to explain when you're in it because it is so confusing. You don't know where it's coming from. Uh -huh. You don't have words to express why you need to do it with such – no one, at, at least that I am aware of, is connecting the dots between survival mode and then, mm -hmm. well, there are people connecting the dots. They're social scientists. They're not your therapist down the road. Right. And so I did, like, what you told me to do, you know, and I, and I, and I kind of, like, had this light bulb moment that, like, basically, yeah, my whole entire life I've felt sorry for myself and mm -hmm. felt like a victim. And then that just makes you want to cope with those feelings. And so you use, you know, food to do that. And. And well, and then you know, on top of the restricting, this is making you want the food too. You know, so it's just all this big like yeah, you know, everything added together, and so it never, um, it's like never-ending cycle. Yeah, and I felt, you know, and a lot of times, like sometimes I do give in, of course, and then you don't get to see that. But like there was, like I went, my son's. I don't know. They said to to bring. They're having a bake sale at his, you know, class or whatever. And I, okay, I'll I'll make brownies, you know. And then I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that because that'll be like tempting for me. So I'll just tell her I'll bring cookies and I'll just go buy the cookies, yeah. you know. I mean, like the, what goes on in my head is like the craziest. Like the conversations I have in my head with myself, like it's just, yeah. It's just be patient <laughs> with yourself. Just be patient. <laughs> And so then I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'll buy the cookies, and then I have to wait for him. Like, oh, well, oh, I could sit in the car. Maybe I'll just have one cookie. And then I'm like, no, you know, no. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, you know, I, I was fine. I forget about it. And But I thought kind of like, why do I want this cookie? Why do I want this cookie? You know, and I think I that's when it kind of light bulb, like, oh, because I'm feeling sorry for myself because I'm on this plan that I – can't have anything like this if, and that's gonna make that makes me want it more and then then that other little like part of me is like no you know suck it up you chose you know like the like drill sergeant you know like, you need to lose I, weight before you recover because that's how I was raised it's like you know you know kind of hardcore like you you don't get anything free in life. You have to work for what you get, you know. And There's some more brainwashing. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, true. And, 
and so I'm like, just suck it up. Like, you chose, you know, you don't have to do this. You chose it. Like, stop being sorry for yourself. And so, like, this whole thing goes on in my head. And then and then we go home, and then um, I have to put, like, you know, two cookies in each little bag and, and uh, to, for the sale or whatever. And so, and I'm like, well, okay, maybe I can just, like, these look really good. Maybe I can just have one, you know. But then I'm like, no, if I just have one, it'll be an odd number. So then Oh, I'm my God, two. this is so <laughs> funny. And I can't have two, so, so just put it away. <laughs> you sound like my dad. My dad's like that. I'm just going to make the cake straight. I just want to straighten that edge. I know. <laughs> like, I'm all about, like, even. even oh, totally. And because yeah. <laughs> you'll use it to your advantage, right? He's using the concept of a straight edge to get I the know. cake that he feels like he's deprived of. Why don't you just cut a goddamn slice? Well, because I'm not supposed to have a slice, but if I straighten the edge, I'm actually doing something helpful. Right. Yeah. It's like me. Right. Like, when I, if I eat ice cream, I have to, like, like make it all level. You know? Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, because then you're doing something right as you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Let me level it all out for the next person. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's very, very cute.